This is a GCSE video about electrical safety. Now, everybody has seen a plug. Everybody has plugged something in and a lot of your devices these days use this kind of a plug um, which changes slightly depending on which country you're in um, but generally has the same kind of thing. Um, it has two main pins and then sometimes it has a third pin here at the top. Um, now what uh, is surrounding the cable here is plastic that's called insulation um, and that's there because metal conducts electricity but plastic does not and so um, if you touch an open metal wire you could get an electric shock but you won't get an electric shock if you touch the plastic because the electricity does not get conducted through the plastic so that's why we use insulation on our wires now if you damage the wire in some way then you may expose some of the metal inside. So damaged insulation, if something gets run over or cut by something sharp and metal, it could damage the insulation and leave exposed wires out that are touchable. And if you touch those wires, you could get an electric shock. So the first safety risk with, um, with electricity is damaged insulation which could lead to an electric shock if you touch the metal wire. The second thing is if you um, load up too many things into an extension lead. So if you plug in lots and lots of different things into the same plug, for example, particularly if you've got lots of extension leads like this one, lots and lots of things plugged in to here, particularly things that use a lot of current, that could lead to overheating of the cables. Now the reason for that is that these cables are only a certain thickness. So they can only take a certain amount of current. Now the more current flows through them, the hotter it gets. And the hotter it gets, the more likely it is to melt. And so if you have lots and lots of things plugged into the same wires, those wires could overheat, melt. They could either melt the plastic insulation or they could melt the wires themselves, and that could cause a fire. So the first thing that we talked about was damaged insulation. The second thing we've talked about is overloaded cables and the damaged insulation could lead to an electric shock and overheated cables could lead to a fire because those cables could melt or cause a lot of heat to be released. The other thing that you have to be aware of is when you have a socket, you don't want water around the socket. The reason for that is water has ions in it and the water, impure water, like the stuff that we get from the tap, conducts electricity. And so if you have water around here, the water could conduct electricity into your hand if you touched it and it could give you an electric shock. Alternatively, the water could conduct electricity inside the circuit where it's not supposed to be conducted and cause a short circuit. So the third one that you need to be aware of is damp or water. The risk of damp is either an electric shock or um, the short circuit. Now a short circuit is if you have two contacts, let's say you want to light up a bulb, and then you've got a battery here. A short circuit is if you got some water by accident and you created a link between these two wires with water, electricity will always take the easiest path to get back to where it started in a circuit. So in this case, the water is the easiest path, and so the electricity will flow through the water and not through the bulb and that could damage any part of that circuit because the electricity is not going where it's supposed to go. So that is a short circuit and that's what could be caused by damp conditions. Now the final safety thing that we need to be aware of is how we can prevent some of these things from happening.
So sometimes accidents do happen and water gets spilled on things or maybe a cable is damaged and nobody has noticed or perhaps someone has overloaded a cable without realising it. Now we have various different things in our home electronics to protect us from fires and from shocks and from short circuits. So. How do we protect ourselves? Well, the first way that we protect ourselves is that third prong on here that some plugs have and some plugs don't. This one does, you can see it's got a metal contact there and British plugs like this one usually have a third prong but sometimes it's made of plastic and sometimes it's made of metal. In this case it's made of metal. Now that third prong is connected to what is called an earth wire. Now the earth wire is connected to earth. And you've seen lightning storms, electricity always wants to get to earth. That is a good place for it to be and that is where it's trying to get to. So if you touch a wire and um, the wire is exposed and electricity is flowing through it, the electricity will go through your body and get to earth. However, if there is an earth wire, that is connected to the earth, like this one, then electricity, instead of flowing through you, will flow through this earth wire, and that will protect you from the electric shock, because metal conducts electricity easier than your body does, and so the easiest route for electricity to get to earth is through this metal conductor. So the first thing that we have is earth wires, and they are usually connected to things with metal frames. Now, the things with the metal casing is more important to have an earth wire because if it's got a plastic casing like this, I can't get an electric shock off that because it's made of plastic. But if this outer surface was made of metal and one of the contacts inside accidentally touched the metal casing, I could get an electric shock. So things that are made of plastic, you generally don't need an earth wire, but things that are made of metal, you do need an earth wire. Now the second thing that we have in our homes is called an RCCB. Now an RCCB stands for Residual Current Circuit Breaker and a circuit breaker, which we call it for short, um, is a piece of electronics which is essentially a switch and if the current flowing through a circuit is too high, the switch automatically switches off and it does that by electromagnetism. Now the final thing that we use to protect us is called a fuse. Now we talked about fuses when we talked about circuit symbols very briefly, but this is what a fuse looks like in a circuit. And a fuse is basically a thin piece of wire that completes the circuit. Now if the circuit, if the current in the circuit gets too high, then the thin piece of wire melts. Now if the thin piece of wire melts, it breaks the circuit and the circuit can no longer conduct electricity. So if the current gets too high, the piece of wire melts, it breaks the circuit and no, no current flows and so it keeps us safe. Now fuses usually have a rating. So if for example, you've got a three amp fuse, that fuse can take three amps before it melts. So anything higher than three amps, the wire inside the fuse will melt. Now if you have a, um, an appliance that needs 10 amps to work, like a kettle for example, then there is no point in using a three amp fuse because as soon as you turn the kettle on and 10 amps start throwing through, flowing through the kettle, your fuse will melt. So what you might use in a kettle is maybe a 12 amp fuse.
Now the 12 amp fuse will allow a little bit of current over what the 10 amps that the kettle says it needs, but any higher than 12 amps it will melt. So if you're asked to choose a type of fuse for a certain appliance, always choose the fuse that is one rating higher or the same rating as the kettle. So if you had a 10 amp fuse, you could use that here, but you wouldn't want to use a nine amp fuse. If you only had a three amp fuse, a six amp fuse, and a 12 amp fuse, you would want to use the 12 amp fuse for your kettle. So that's how you choose fuses. The only other thing that you need to know about this electrical safety stuff is you need to be able to compare a fuse and a RCCB, a residual current circuit breaker. Now fuses are, um, we, we already know that they melt, so after the metal has melted, they need to be replaced. Whereas the RCCB is just a switch, so you can just be switched back on. The fuse is very cheap, but the RCCB costs more money to install. Finally, the fuse, the final difference between fuses and circuit breakers is that fuses take time to melt. They don't melt immediately whereas circuit breakers switch off immediately. So there's no delay, there's no chance of a fire starting with an RCCB because it switches off immediately as soon as an excessive current is detected, whereas a fuse takes about a second or so to melt. So in that second, a fire could start or something like that. So an advantage of an RCCB is it switches off immediately.